Okay, let me start off by saying that this phone is way after its buzz. This phone debuted in September of 2015. And now that we are in January 2017, a year and four months later, this phone still does what I ask it to do. It is still a fast phone. And even though a lot of the techies out there might say, oh, he is reviewing an old phone. The purpose of this video is for a consumer's point of view. Yes, the technology rating has what it will have for brand new devices, but this device is my daily driver. And in this video, I'd like to share with you guys. Enjoy. This is 270EHA19 here, and I'm going to be reviewing my Motorola X Generation 3 Style Pure Edition. Now, what they mean by Pure Edition is that this is the 64 gigabyte model. Well, as you saw right there, the active motor display just turned on. So we're going to talk about that shortly. In the meantime, this is how the phone looks all around. On the right, you see the volume marker and the power button. Let's see if I can zoom in a little closer with that volume marker there. Because it's kind of hard to see in this lighting. There we go. Volume marker, the power button. And you look towards the back. And this is what I ordered. I got the black rubber, or you could say it's more like a grippy rubber that I just got. I purchased this on Amazon for five hundred dollars, and it was free free shipping too. How does the phone feel? Well, the phone feels very sturdy. The calls. Are pretty clear and the stereo audio on this thing I love it as for alarm clock use I love waking up to this phone each and every single day without further ado let's look at the specifications on the phone these are the specifications you see on the phone right here and I'm gonna scroll slowly so you can take a look at it. Okay, now This phone does have some pros and cons, and I'm going to go through them really quick. Um, what are the pros of the phone? Number one, stereo speakers, front firing. Number two, twist camera. Number three, chop chop flashlight. Number four, battery saver mode. Number five, micro SD expansion option up to 128 gigabytes. Yes, I got an I got a 128 gigabyte card that I still need to install on this phone. Um, I got the 64 gigabyte version on it right now, but I'd say in the near future I'm going to be upgrading to that card. I just bought this card like a few months ago, so I'm kind of lazy at putting it in the phone. Number six, accessory bumper case. Yes, it does have that. When I opened up the package, it came with the bumper case, but who wants to have an accessory bumper case that goes all around the phone just covering the sides? You know, why Motorola, why didn't you make a clear case just to kind of cover the whole phone? I think it looks more stylish, but I figure maybe you wanted your consumers just to kind of touch the feel of the phone maybe? I guess that's why you just did this bumper case that only goes on the sides of the phone. That's probably my understanding of that. All right, continuing on with the pros. Um, number seven, turbocharger. 
yes this phone came with a turbo charger and it does charge up to one hour and 17 minutes so or also known as 77 minutes number eight very customizable for backs fronts and speaker accents yes um, I took a look at the Motorola website and it is just amazing the options that you can choose for your speaker accents that are these little accents that you see right over here um, the backs and also the cool thing is the, the face you could also choose this in white if you'd like so that's pretty cool all right number nine uh, customize silence times oh my goodness I do love this as well too customize silence times choose the times when you want your phone to be silent number 10 from fire and flash so this little bulb that you see right over here that's the front fire and flash of the phone you can take pictures so that right there is pretty cool uh, it's very rare that you see uh, phones like this that would have a front fire, fire and flash mostly most of the phones they always have them in the rear like this one has it over here in the rear as well but to have it in the front I love it I really really love it all right so continuing on number 11 three capacities to choose from which are 16 32 or 64 gigabytes so you could choose a 16 gigabyte model a 32 gigabyte model or a 64 gigabyte model just like what you see here in front of you right now number 12 motor voice plenty of commands to choose from let's demonstrate that right now watch this okay modi x find my phone That's just an example of what motor voice can do and it can do more it can do more to check your agenda it can do more like setting your timers alarms you name it it can do what you need to do but i i chose this one because it's easier for me because this phone has my work email onto it and i just don't want to unlock it right now during the time of this video maybe i'll do it at a later time but not now all right, so let's talk about the cons of this phone. This phone does have some cons. Now, some of you may agree, others may not agree. So here are the cons. Number one, no standard video option, only HD or 4K. So if you wanna record like a standard video that you just want to put on a DVD or so forth, well, get ready to have a uh, video converter software that can be able to do that or you're gonna have to find some way to uh, downscale it to DVD if you want to put this video that you shoot from this phone onto a DVD so get ready for that number two one speaker speaker phone that's one thing that really annoys me about this because on the Motorola on the Motorola X second generation the Motorola X sex oh man why is my tongue getting so tight on the motorola x second generation phone all right when you're using the speaker phone on that phone which i have it at home it sounds pretty loud but i notice that on this phone it has two speakers why is it that when you have this phone on speaker phone you're only or should I say this phone is only using the speaker on just one side Partic particularly it's on this side right over here if the phone is capable of having two stereo speakers why can it have a double speaker speaker phone Motorola haven't you thought of that like really okay Moto active display no options to turn it off so If you look at these little sensors that you see right here, all right, 
me wait until that comes back on again. If you look at these sensors that you see right... Oh my goodness. <laughs> now this phone's acting funky on me now. If you see these sensors that you see right over here. Three sensors. The camera's able to pick it up, but the human naked eye can't. Now. When I wave my hand over it. You can see the time comes on. Maybe to some of you, you would like to at least turn this off. I'd love to turn this off myself too. But Motorola decided not to put in such, a, such an option. I would because, you know, it's kind of annoying in the nighttime when you want to pick up your phone and you want to do something with it and you see that the Moto Active Display turns on like that. You know? How can you turn this off? Really? I mean, it's awesome. I think it's awesome. But if you want to keep it on at certain times, you can. But how about turning it off? You know? Like, really? At least give us an option as for consumers just to kind of turn that off. I mean, I think it's great. I think it's really great. But sometimes I just don't want to see that on all the time. Number four, let's see, size, only for those who put it in their pockets. <laughs> that is kind of a con because when you stick this in your, in your shirt pocket, it feels really big in your shirt pocket. When you stick it in your jacket pocket, which is the inside pocket towards your chest, it feels pretty big. But if you take a, a four inch phone, it feels much more comfortable, but something like this behemoth, oh my god, it's pretty big. How about five? Um, LED screen. Um, it's kind of a con, because this is kind of a double-edged sword in a way. I mean, it's kind of a con and yet not, because when you compare this screen... I mean, colors look nice and everything, but when you compare this with AMOLED, AMOLED pops a whole lot better. But, I guess with the simplicity of an LED screen, well, I'm sure we're all used to it by now. You know, it's technology that's a, little, a bit older, but Motorola, why did you decide to go with LED instead of AMOLED? Really? And another thing I also noticed with AMOLED, because I can tell you this by the experience of the second generation phone which I still have at home by the way if you look at this in the dark the whole screen comes on but if you have an AMOLED screen only only come on turn on just the time goes on and the little lock icon but on this phone the whole thing goes on I don't know why Motorola you decided to go for LED on this model I don't know why especially for this generation a generation that has things a little bit better why did you step down to LED don't know why number six camera video options um, yes I talked about this before it lacks the standard video options and number seven seasonal boot animation the, anim the animation you see when turning the phone on. Oh my god. That right there is annoying as can be. Yes. The animation on this phone. I mean it's great to see. If you want to see like a nice display. But yes. It gets annoying. But other than that. Once the phone is on. This thing is ready to battle. I mean this behemoth. For what I put it through, it's ready to battle. I mean, I don't put this phone to too much stress. Um, but I do have a couple of applications that I'm running on this thing. Not much. I mean, there are other people that are younger than me. See, like me, I'm a 39-year-old man, okay? And the applications I put on this thing would be, for example, like uh, Wikipedia, Google Maps. And, and let's see, maybe like Color Note. Uh, an alarm clock, a music player, YouTube, you know, basic apps that I could run the phone with. But 
you know stuff like Facebook Instagram or Twitter I put those applications on a tablet because a phone in my opinion you use it primarily to make phone calls because that's what this device is for is to be a communication device that you can be able to make phone calls now just excuse me here just for a sec so I could just uh, put in my password and then I can show you the applications that I use on this phone all right so these are some of the applications that I use um, let me turn off the overhead light over here real quick let's see there all right so these are the applications that I normally use on a day-to-day -day basis on this phone right there you get the idea let's get out of here um, I have some music songs right over here stolen on, on the device um, I also use SoundHound let's see what else do I use um, I use the high quality voice recorder visual voicemail color note Wikipedia I also use um, the essential Google Docs that you see right over here uh, similar to Microsoft Office um, I also use the gallery and I also have the, the, the T-Mobile app to, to uh, pay my bills I have the e-reader app right over here and let's see I also have the the weather what can I say this this is this is like a little a little weather link to the Google weather uh, web there I also have my IDs right over here so I can take my identifications with me on my phone like you see right over here those are all of my identifications that are right there so I can use this phone to take my identifications with me no matter where I go and I don't have to carry my regular IDs with me as long as you have copies you'll be all set now what are other things right, right over here I do have the JW Bible I have Pandora and then I also have other applications here in the bottom that you see of course the phone ES file manager and then of course the app launcher is right over here so you could launch any uh, extra apps and by the way this phone is running Android Marshmallow as of this date as of August 23, 2016. All right. So let me just close this up here. So let's see. JW Bible and Pandora. I mentioned that. And then lastly, I use uh, Google Chrome in the camera. And then, of course, if I go to the next home screen, I also have other... Uh, quick access phone calls that I need to do so that's right there on this home screen so what do I think of the Moto X generation 3 let's see let me, let me just rename that again because this is such a long name for such a phone so what do I think about the Motorola X generation 3 style pure edition what do i think about this phone well using it using it as a daily driver uh this phone for me in my opinion it it does what i ask it to do probably a whole lot little more i mean this phone feels to me i mean if you ever grew up in the 80s and if you ever owned let me see here something turn on the light so like I was saying, if you ever grew up in the 80s and you ever owned an 8-cylinder Chevrolet Caprice Classic, that's what this phone feels to me. Now, <laughs> yeah, this thing really sucks up a lot of battery. It really, really does. But, I mean, thanks to the power saving mode, I mean, it can save you some of the energy. And even with the power saver mode, I was able to at least play YouTube videos on this thing and it does awesome. It really, really, really does. But once you take off that power saving mode, forget it. You know, you can unleash some more power out of this thing. And this thing really, really rocks according to the specifications you saw earlier. So, uh, yes, it does come with the accessories that I've mentioned. 
but the cool thing about this thing is that you know it's it's a phone that's that's really done me good and as of this date for Tuesday August 23 2016 this is 11 month you know the 11 month old technology as what we see right here in front of you right now now as of what just came out uh, what do you think about the new Motorola Z phone very similar to this um, has a fingerprint sensor and you can actually change a lot of accessories in the back of the phone it doesn't have a headphone jack it has a USB-C on that phone so what do you think of that phone in contrast to this one which is another thing that I like to mention it does have a headphone jack so I don't have to worry about you know how complicated the, the other phone has it you know and I'll get to that in a sec also looking at the other end of the phone it has the regular micro USB connector now I'm sure everybody's gonna have a very different opinion of this because of course we all do I mean we all feel comfortable with our phones this is how I feel comfortable with mine I just love the simplicity of old-school stuff that really make it effective on the effective onto modern technology and this for me is awesome now talking about the headphone jack right over here I've seen that on other phones that have the USB type C audio you know you have to purchase an adapter okay to put it onto the USB C so then you can be able to plug in your regular headphones onto that adapter well, as on this one, you can just simply plug in your headphones and you're all set to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to be comparing the sound on how this phone sounds versus other devices. So one moment and I will be right back. Here we have the Motorola X Generation 3 sitting next to the Samsung Galaxy Tab S2. What I would like to do with these devices are going to be a sound comparison between the two using their built-in speakers. Now the microphones on this camera are not going to do any justice due to the YouTube compression. However, the song titled come to win is the one I'm going to play on both devices and this one is from the YouTube audio library so first off we are going to try the Samsung Galaxy Tab S2 Next, we're going to try the Motorola X Generation 3. Both devices were playing the audio at their maximum volume. This is 270 EHA19 simply saying thank you for watching.